With the way 2020 has gone so far, everybody is trying to guess what the next major disaster will be. The terrifying thing about natural disasters is that in most cases, nothing can be done to prevent them. They happen, and then we just have to deal with the aftermath. Today, I have a list of 10 natural disasters that could happen any day now. Before I begin, make sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Hurricane season takes place every year from June 1st to November 30th. Unfortunately, the 2020 hurricane season is currently being predicted by researchers at Colorado State University to rival the worst hurricane season on record, with 12 storms being expected to reach hurricane status. With that many hurricanes, there is a pretty good chance of at least one reaching the unofficial super hurricane status. Some examples of previous super hurricanes have been Irene, Katrina, Wilma, and Sandy. Each of these storms took a severe toll on the east and gulf coasts of America, causing billions of dollars in damages and resulting in high numbers of fatalities. Unfortunately, the frequency of these so-called super hurricanes has been increasing since the 1980s, and, to make matters worse, as coastal cities continue to grow, the devastation caused by these storms is also expected to increase. On the south slope of the Kilauea volcano, on Hawaii's Big Island, lies the infamous Halina Slump. The slump is a mass of 10 to 12,000 cubic meters of land that is slowly being pushed outwards and downwards by the forces of expanding magma below and gravity. Geologists have hypothesized that roughly 120,000 years ago, a mass of slightly larger size was dislodged by seismic or volcanic activity and slid rapidly down into the ocean, generating a tsunami with a height of over 300 feet. Even as recently as 1975, movement of the Halina Slump generated a smaller, yet destructive tsunami that reached all the way to the coast of California. If the entire slump was dislodged today, it could create another massive tsunami that could devastate the coastal areas of California. The last known tsunami to hit Europe occurred over 8,000 years ago, However, new research reveals that there have been several earthquakes deep underwater below the sea floor since then. The underwater cliffs right off of Norway's coast are 3,800 meters tall and have significant amounts of sediment laying on top of the slope leading to them. If one of these earthquakes triggered a landslide along these continental slopes, it could create a massive tsunami that would pose serious dangers to cities along the North Sea coast, such as Amsterdam, Dunkirk, Edinburgh, and many others. A recent study has suggested that the drought conditions experienced in the western U.S. since 2000 could be the start of a mega drought rivaling the worst droughts the U.S. has ever experienced throughout the last 1200 years. The drought conditions are tied to climate patterns known as El Nino and La Nina. During La Nina years, the tropical Pacific Ocean is cooler than average, storms aim farther along the west coast, and drought conditions become commonplace in the western U.S. Already, drought conditions have caused an increase in wildfires in the western U.S. and water shortages in California. Four to six million people visit Yellowstone National Park every year to see the beautiful geysers and scenery in spite of the fact that the park is situated on top of a 44-mile-wide supervolcano. The scary thing is that the volcano is still active and could erupt at any time. Its last big eruption was 630,000 years ago, and was 2,500 times as violent as the 1980 St. Helens eruption, and created a 1,500 square mile sunken crater. An eruption today could cause another massive crater, cause a short-term cooling of the entire globe by clouding out the sun with ash, and flood everything within hundreds of miles with a pyroclastic flow of hot ash, gases, and volcanic matter. Historically, California experiences a massive flood every 150 to 200 years. The last one of these floods occurred 158 years ago and is known as the Great Flood of 1862. The Great Flood covered an area of 5 to 6,000 square miles throughout the Great Central Valley of California with water. Scientists predict that the next flood could be imminent in that it would once again flood the Central Valley, displacing millions of people. Also, cities up and down the coast would be flooded as well as the rainfall made its way to the coast. Winds could reach 125 miles per hour and rampant landslides would destroy roads and make travel impossible. The source of these cataclysmic floods is actually very interesting. They come from atmospheric rivers. The specific atmospheric river flows off the Pacific Ocean towards the mountains carrying 20 times the flow of the Mississippi River, but in vapor form. When the warm vapor reaches the coastal mountains, it is forced upwards where it then cools and turns into the heavy rainfall that then causes the flooding. 
Most people have heard of the San Andreas Fault and that it could trigger another earthquake at any time. However, the San Andreas Fault can only produce a maximum of roughly an 8.2 on the Richter scale, which is bad, but not awful. However, just north lies another fault known as the Cascadia Subduction Zone, and it runs for 700 miles off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. The Cascadia Zone is where two massive tectonic plates are slowly ramming into each other. Unfortunately, this cannot go on indefinitely, and eventually, one of the plates will slip above the other causing one of two scenarios. The best case scenario would be if only the southern part of the Cascadia Zone gave way, and it would result in an 8.0 to 8.7 magnitude quake. The other scenario would be if the entire zone gave away at once. This would result in an 8.7 to 9.2 quake. If this happens, the entire northwest edge of the continent from California to Canada would sink about 6 feet and slide west 30 to 100 feet. Some of that shift would take place under the ocean and create two tsunamis. One would head for Japan, and the other would be a 700 long wall of water that would reach the northwest coast of North America approximately 15 minutes after the shift occurred. The massive amount of seismic activity would also trigger a bout of volcanic activity, possibly even the Yellowstone supervolcano. The head of FEMA for the area that includes Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Alaska has said that everything west of Interstate 5 will be, quote, toast if this event occurs. Unlike some of the events on this list, several groups of seismologists and geologists have all agreed that the Cascadian Big One actually has a decent chance of occurring within the next 50 years, giving it odds of about 1 in 3. In 2012, the Earth narrowly missed being hit by a massive solar storm, the most powerful in over 150 years. The last major solar storm-related incident occurred in 1859. The storm caused telegraph lines to spark, set fire to some telegraph offices, and disabled the entire telegraph network temporarily. Daniel Baker, a researcher at the University of Colorado, believes that the July 2012 storm was of the same strength as the 1859 event, with the only difference being that it missed. If a similar storm were to make full contact, it could completely wipe out the internet and anything connected to it, causing trillions of dollars in damage and causing mass chaos throughout the developed world. Indonesia is home to 127 active volcanoes, so it is no stranger to eruptions. However, there is one volcano that has been mostly ignored despite its ability to cause massive destruction. Known as the Forgotten Volcano, the Lake Toba supervolcano lies underneath Lake Toba, the lake that formed after the last eruption created a massive caldera that filled up with water. Currently, the volcano is in a state of resurgence. To make matters worse, because it is located on an island country, any significant eruption would also create several tsunamis radiating out in multiple directions to cause further destruction. The Three Gorges Dam is a hydroelectric dam that spans the Yangtze River in China. It is the largest dam in the world and is 7,661 feet long and 594 feet tall. It was constructed using 35.6 million cubic yards of concrete and 463,000 tons of steel, which is enough to construct the Eiffel Tower 63 times. The reservoir behind the dam is 410 miles long and almost three quarters of a mile wide. The dam has a total storage capacity of 6.31 trillion gallons. The dam gathered so much water in one place that it literally slowed the rotation of the earth after it was constructed. Now that you understand how massive this structure is, imagine what would happen if it collapsed. This summer, the province the dam is located in has experienced some of the heaviest rains since the dam was constructed, and it has begun to bulge at its concrete seams. The reservoir has already flooded its banks, which has impacted 34 million people with serious flooding. But that will be nothing compared to what will happen if the dam fully gives way. The area that would be flooded if the dam breaks is home to 350 million people, 38% of China's clean water sources, 40% of their grain fields, 66% of their freshwater fish, 25% of the country's farmable land, some of the densest areas of manufacturing plants and factories, strategic military positions, and much more. The tsunami-like flood would cause shortages of food and everyday items across the world, and millions of Chinese citizens would likely starve if they didn't drown. To make matters worse, there are six major fault lines around the dam, and the release of the 42 billion tons of water would likely trigger multiple earthquakes. I hope you all enjoyed today's video, and maybe even learned something. 
Don't worry too much about any of these events, because in reality, there's nothing you can do to stop them, so worrying is pointless. If I missed anything you think should have been included, let me know down in the comments. I'd appreciate if you would leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. See you all next time.